All right, what is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? This was originally slated uh, to be... I wanted to just talk about Evo specifically. Um, obviously, they had the Evo announcements over, like, I don't know, a week ago. I can't even remember when the hell it was. <laughs> I have been a busy, busy man. And uh, so I have I just didn't really have time to sit down and talk about it as in-depth as I would have liked to. And now I kind of feel like the moment's passed. So rather than talk about each game specifically, uh, go in on each thing, I just wanted to mention a few notes. Number one, my dumbass needs to buy a Wii U. And my dumbass should have bought a Wii U back in the holiday season. Uh, Monsieur John Brown on YouTube actually asked me, yo, when are you going to get into Smash? And I was like, oh, when I fucking buy a Wii U... I'm waiting for a price drop. And uh, <laughs> over the holiday season, they had two different bundles available. I cannot remember specifics on the first one. I can remember that the Mario Kart 8 bundle was specifically from Target. And it was $249.99. But there was also a Splatoon and Smash Bros. bundle. I cannot... I Thinking about it now, I don't know why I didn't buy it. I should have bought that motherfucking thing. Because it had at least one of the games that I knew I would be getting in Smash. Uh, just for pure, like, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. I've never really played a Smash game in my life. So I have no idea how it would end up. But I do know it's a game that I am going to try for sure. And then obvious, uh, ha. obviously Splatoon has all of the positive word of mouth in the world. So I'm sure I would enjoy that game. So again, I don't know why I didn't buy it. And I should have, and I regret not buying it, because now, you know, like, that bundle is $350 plus anywhere you actually want to buy it. So, uh, well, that was a mistake that I made, but now it's also got that feature of, like, oh, it was at this price point at one time, so I'm not going to buy it if it's more than that price point, you know, like me being the cheap bastard that I am. So, I am waiting on that, but I do... I want to get a Wii U. I have wanted to get... Uh, I've been kind of, you know, looking out ever since Bayonetta 2 was announced, basically. Because Bayonetta 2... I love Bayonetta. It's one of my favorite games, uh, period. Like, really, it's... I don't know if I would put it on a top five list, but it's definitely up there. If you ask me, you know, like, hey, man, what are your favorite action games? Bayonetta's in top five of the genre. That's for damn sure. Um, so I certainly want to play Bayonetta 2. I certainly want to try out... Um, Smash, and uh, there are obviously other games that I would like to try, but I've never been too big on a lot of Nintendo's in-house offerings. Uh, like, I've never, I didn't grow up with Mario, I didn't grow up with Zelda, so I've never really gotten into the, into those games in general, but I still would like to try them and see if maybe I could develop a similar level of fondness uh, for Nintendo that most people seem to, seem to have, but for me personally, like, when you ask me, what do you love about Nintendo? Like, but just specifically Nintendo, I got Pokemon. Like, that's... I grew up on Pokemon. But everything else is, like, from other studios. I don't really play any of... And even then, like, it's still not really Nintendo. That's still Game Freak. But obviously, Game Freak has been in a uh, partnership with Nintendo all this time. So it's basically Nintendo. Um... But yeah, like I said, I never really got into Mario, never got into Donkey Kong, never got into... I actually, funny story, uh, in a local blockbuster, a lot, I just, just, I remembered this just now, uh, there was a chance to win either... I can't remember what the other price was, but they had a competition between the Nintendo, the SNES, and the Sega Genesis. And on one hand, you could play Donkey Kong Country, and you could potentially win an SNES from that. On the other side, you could play a Judge Dredd game on the Sega Genesis. And so I was like, man, I don't want to play that childish... Like, keep in mind, at this point in time, I'm like eight. And I'm sitting here like, I'm not going to play that childish shit with the donkey in it. Give me this motherfucker with the gun, yo! <laughs> While I'm eight. Uh, so anyway, I tried out Judge Dredd, and I got bodied, and that was it, and I never got anything. If I had played the Donkey Kong thing, like, I may have won an SNES... I may have, uh, you know, grown up significantly differently thanks to having an SNES. So who knows where my life would have gone and if I had made that one simple little choice differently. If I had decided to play with the Kong instead of the Dread. But, we didn't. We played with Judge Dread and we got our asses kicked by like some alien or something. I can't even remember. That game was weird. <laughs> uh, so anyway, moving on forward. Uh, 
what what do I want to talk about moving on forward? I forgot every everything. Oh, we're going to talk about some game story stuff. I am just going to read exactly what I have written down. <coughs> Can we talk about how goddamn stupid the what you're doing is bad, but I'm not going to try to reason with you, story trope is? Seriously, I'm playing Stella Glow right now, and it's so goddamn obvious that something funky is occurring, but the villains are all just talking about how they're trying to save the world, and we're trying to destroy it, but they never fucking say what the actual problem is, despite the MCs, that stands for main character, constant displays of being willing to listen or reason. It's such weak storytelling and an enormous cop-out to keep the story moving forward. People are so shit at writing villains. I just wanted to throw that out there. It really bugs the shit out of me. When, like, you can tell as a player, you know, it's not just like, oh, these motherfuckers are just raving lunatics. They're not worth listening to. Like, you can tell they know some shit. They have reasoning behind what they're doing. And yet, they won't, like, despite, again, the main character is like, what, like, legitimately saying, why are you doing this? And the villains are just like, yeah, because fuck you, that's why. You know that's not the reason, but that's what they're saying. And I really fucking hate it when a story is built up as like, these are the villains, these are the heroes, this is the hero's mission, but clearly there's something wrong with their mission. Clearly there are some details that are not being shared by somebody who's trying to manipulate the entire thing, who's manipulating the information, warping it to make it seem like a good thing when really it's just something that fits their own agenda and will, you know move forward their plans for world domination and blah 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 you know something is wrong the characters feel like something might not be on the up and up the villains hint that something is definitely fucked up and they're trying to stop it but just for whatever reason not for whatever reason there is no logical reason behind it the only reason they do not share it is because they can, they know that just one simple sentence will completely grind the story to a halt. And your own party will be like, oh shit, we can't be doing that no more. <laughs> like, that's how it is. And so it's just like... Ah! <laughs> I hate it when it's something like that. Where like one sentence, one line said by any one person would just completely bring the entire thing to a halt. And just be like, oh shit, well we can't be doing that no more. Alright, game over. Pack it up. We're going home. <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. It bugs me. Um, oh, I missed it. I, I, it. There was a paragraph break. I have more. Oh, hey, a calamity has descended on the world. It would have been stopped with a five-minute conversation. That's good writing. That, that, was my, that was my other input. That basically sums it up right there. Like, it bugs me so much. It bugs me so, so much. Anyway, that aside, go ahead, go out and play Stella Glow. It's a fun little strategy RPG. It's not particularly, like, if you're looking for a super difficult one, that's not it. It was not, there were certain moments that were kind of iffy depending on your level. Like, I went in, I never did any side grinding. I never really focused any specific set of units. I kept, you know, trying to use a bunch of different people. Um... And so thanks to that, I was a little under-leveled at certain points, which did make it more difficult than it could have been. Um, but it definitely is not... I would never say, like, oh, if you're looking for a hardcore challenge that only the select few of the gaming world are going to be able to complete, that is not it for you. But it's a fun little game. Um, despite my issues with the story, the characters in general are at least fairly likable. Blah, blah, blah. So if you can get over that little bit, which clearly I can't, uh, it's, it's a fun game. But anyway... Um, that actually kind of leads into my other point. Because I have not really been playing fighting games recently, I've been getting into my backlog of other games. And it is truly unfortunate that my two favorite genres of games in general are fighting games or JRP. Well, not necessarily RPGs in general, but I definitely have a whole hell of a lot more JRPGs than I have any other form of RPG. Plus, you add in the fact that, like, 
Western RPGs are kind of developing into a more MMO style where it's very open world, very open ended. You can kind of explore a lot of shit. And I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing, but the problem is, is that a lot of developers think that they need to have this big open world for players to explore, but then it's just not packed with content. So you have so much time in between where it's like you have one minute of an awesome experience followed by like half an hour of just trudging around looking for that next minute you're just searching around for your next hit dog you turn it into drug addicts dog quests aren't really that interesting it's just simple fetch uh shit you know like, i don't i don't really want to knock it specifically because certain games do it incredibly well certain games don't but with the just continued kind of spread and development of western rpgs are definitely trying to go and stick with that open world route versus jrpgs tend to be at least fairly linear they may not be like you know they may have an open world to traverse where you can kind of discover some different things but they definitely have a set path that you need to take the story in if you're going to complete uh the game whereas something like skyrim like you can just go out and stumble around into countless places and never advance the story. Whereas, you know, in most JRPGs that have an overworld map, if you go somewhere early in that over, like either you're restricted in the world until you get to a certain point, and then by that point where you are opened up into being able to explore the open world, now like you advance the story far enough where you visited most of the places anyway. Or it's just like, nah, man, you can't. Like, you know, there'll be guards stationed at the gate. Like, nah, you can't come through here, bitch. Turn your ass around, get back on your airship, and go where you're supposed to go. You know, like that kind of thing. Like, it's restricted movement. Again, versus something like Skyrim, where there, it's unrestricted. You go wherever the fuck you want. Um, so, it, I definitely would say I lean more toward the JRPG style of... Because it's just... I don't know. I feel like there's just generally... Usually, there's just not enough interesting stuff to do uh, in a large amount of open world games. Unless you kind of just create your own uh entertainment i suppose but it's not like you know i like story i fucking love story skyrim don't got story <laughs> i shouldn't say it doesn't have it but it's just the everybody knows if you play an elder scrolls game the story of it is not the selling point it is generally it's there but it's not particularly strong it's not particularly compelling you're not playing the game for the story you are playing it for the experience and largely, I just kind of don't really dig the experience. Thus, I lean more towards JRPGs. Um, so it, it just it sucks because they're oh my god, they take so long. Like with Stella Glow, Stella Glow had two different endings. You have what is designated the true ending, and then just the normal ending. Um, getting those two, so playing New Game Plus, and you know playing through a regular game, and then getting into New Game Plus and playing that took me around like I think forty five hours, maybe a little bit less than that, in order to complete both of those playthroughs. Uh, I played, shit, Trails of Heroes, Legend of Cold, is it Legend of, he no, it's Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel, I can never remember which one, um, that recently came out on the PS3, like, right after Christmas, I played that, I did the same thing, I beat it twice, um, and that took me around 75 hours or so, like, a lot of time, um, so yeah, so those take up a lot of time, and then fighting games, obviously those take up a shit ton of time just to be decent in them, like, Everybody wants to talk about Street Fighter V, how Street Fighter V is simplified, casualized, whatever the hell you want to talk about, significantly easier to learn. Now, that is somewhat true. I can definitely pick up a character in Street Fighter V faster than I can in just about any other fighting game that I have played. I will freely admit that. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing if the game's systems can support, like, you kind of either need... I'm sorry, that's that helicopter. I don't know if that's getting picked up on the microphone, but it sounds close. Um, you either need, like, significant depth in characters, or significant depth in the systems of the game itself, to really make it. Like, you can have really simple characters working on a really, like, in-depth, uh, just very kind of, I don't know, diverse game system in general. What the fuck <laughs> is that helicopter doing? It needs to go away, it's bugging me. Um... So yeah, I mean, it just it, it kind of depends. I think Street Fighter V could certainly use a couple more. Th like, there's, it's almost there, but not quite. That being said, I don't think it's quite as simple as everybody's making it out to be. 
Um, but it's definitely, you know, like, I can learn a character pretty quickly, and then from that point on, it's just kind of focusing um, on them. I can't remember, I did talk about this in one of the videos, but I think I'm gonna, because I, I have two more videos that I recorded of the Street Fighter V beta, but I don't even know, if, I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with them, I might just get rid of them, um, or I might just kind of uh, go through and, you know, kind of do like a best of moments kind of thing versus or i might just go through and like remove all the middle ground like just put up the matches and nothing i don't know what i'm gonna do yet i do know i'm not gonna post them as they are because i just don't think neither myself nor my opponents were like doing anything special thus it's not really worth watching that kind of a thing um but i did mention in them like a large reason why because i know i'm gonna main chun li at this point i know for a fact chun li is going to be my focal character of everybody i'm going to focus on them the most but I am interested in plenty of other characters in the cast. And so I was just trying out all those characters in the cast because, like, I don't know if these characters are going to be exactly the same come retail release. I don't know if the game is going to... Ooh, excuse me. I don't know if the game is going to be the same come retail release. I do know my method of playing the game is not going to be the same come retail release because hopefully I will have my Mad Cats TES Plus by then uh, versus playing on the goddamn PS4 pad that I hate so much. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I just, I didn't want to, I could have played Chun-Li that entire time and I could have just, you know, really nailed down all of her basics really, and then built upward from there, uh, gotten a significantly better at neutral, had better block strings, confirms, blah, 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 you know, all that kind of shit that you narrow down as you play a fighting game. Or I could go around and I could experiment with everybody. I have no idea what started this discussion. So I'm going to end it there and move on. Oh, right. Because it, ta it takes so much time uh, just to be good in a fighting game. Like, to get to that level where you feel like, okay, I can definitely play against other people now and make a decent uh, make a decent showing of myself. And th But then, you know, if you sit down and you're playing a fighting game and you love that fighting game, like, I cannot count how many times I have sat down and played against people in Blaze Blue, in Marvel, uh, in O'Neal, where it's just like, I just sit down, I start playing, and then all of a sudden, it's like three hours later, and I'm just like, holy shit, where'd the time go? It can take, it can suck up a lot of your time, so like, I feel like two of the, you know, genres that I appreciate the most are also two of the most time-consuming, and so I actually didn't get that far into my backlog of video games, because the games that I do have are so goddamn time-consuming. But, I did get to play Shovel Knight, Finally, how long has that game been out? Proves I just, I'm so bad at platformers. Oh god, I'm so bad. I did. I wound up. Uh, I did beat it. Um, I made some progress on Plague Knight's mission as well. But Plague Knight's very. He has some very potent movement options, but they're kind of wild too. Like you need to be very in control of that dude and know exactly where you are going to end up with each movement option in order to properly use him. And so the amount of deaths I have suffered just from flying off into pits partially is my own fault. I haven't, I need to, I should be, um, he has this magic move where he like kind of just drops a beaker underneath him. It's not actually a beaker because be, I believe a beaker has that like really thin uh, top that kind of tapers away into the more cylindrical thing versus this one is like, it's just a cylinder. Um... But whatever, you know, I'm not a, I'm no scientist, shoot, so I don't know proper terminology and whatnot. Um, he just, you know, drops it underneath him and that serves as a platform and that's basically what that exists for. It's kind of like an, oh shit, save me. I need to start using that because I have a whole lot of, oh God, Jesus, take the wheel, please, moments while I am playing as Plague Knight. But yeah, I'm, I'm bad at platformers. <laughs> just pure and simple, I'm so bad. So... What else we got to talk about? Let's talk about Blaze Blue Central Fiction. <gasps> oh boy. Let's talk about my boy Tager. Now, I will freely admit, uh, you know, we've heard ever since we've started Blaze Blue, I have talked about how much I dislike Tager in general, how I'm never gonna play this character again. Inevitably, like you know, a, the poor whipped man I am, I end up back with Tager. I somehow, I get drunk, and then I wake up, and there's that motherfucker right beside me, I don't even remember calling that dude. That's just how it happens, right? But the thing is, is like, in the past, despite all of that, 
I have always enjoyed watching him. You know, certain players, especially like Grandia, is basically at the top. Where like if I saw his name involved, I was like, oh shit, I have to watch this dude's match. Uh, Tiku is up there as well. There's another one who changed his name. And I can't, he used to go by the name UNDER in all caps. And he changed it to like Wataru or something like that. I don't know. But I always I always watch him because he was never... Like, he was a combo monster. He always did harder combos that were like slightly better than everybody else. But he didn't really have like his pressure, his mix-up, his neutral just wasn't really at the level of everybody else. But he was always doing combos nobody else was. And so it was fun watching him for that. Uh, but anyway, point being, despite, you know, me always saying, like, ah, I don't really like this version of Tager, except for CP 1.0, where that was, in my opinion, CP 1.0 is the best Tager has ever been. Uh, watching Central Fiction Tager, I don't even want to watch him anymore. I don't even, if I see, like, I'm looking for, like, really solid Azriel players, I'm looking for really solid Hibiki players, Talkaka players, I don't give a shit about Tager anymore. Like, that is, this is the nail, this version of him is the nail in the coffin for me. But then you add on the fact the two most recently announced characters, Nine and Izanami, both look like fucking atrocious matchups for Tager. Like, I think Nine is going to wind up being, if not the worst, definitely top three worst possible matchups for Tager in the game. Izanami looks terrible too, and so it's already just like, I, I hate this version of Tager more than I have ever hated Tager before, but then you add on, like, two characters that are probably going to be pretty damn popular that will just destroy him. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, rest in peace, my boy Tager. You you had a good run in CP and CP 1.1, but, boy, they fucked your day up here in Central Fiction. Makes me a little sad. I But what really is making me sad is that they have not announced a goddamn thing for a console version. Um, and I'm not expecting anything for a while, too, because I was thinking Revelator would be out on consoles like March, April, maybe May at the latest, and then it doesn't come out until June. It's not coming out until June. So I'm not expecting a Japanese announcement for a... I mean, an announcement for the Japanese console version of Central Fiction until around then and i'm not actually expecting the game until like this winter it's i feel like this probably you know if it doesn't come out if it comes out earlier than october i will be shocked and i'm kind of expecting a november-ish release date and that is a long time to wait for a game that the majority of people just really don't care for like you have to be a really, really strong Blaze Blue fan at this point to still be playing Extend. <laughs> that was not a game that was received very well. It was not a game that a lot of people. I mean, I have never seen a game more complained about in the Blaze Blue series than CP Extend. Uh, so it is a shame that we do have to wait. You know, while Japan arcades are getting this whole Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 story thing going on, we're sitting over here on our asses just hoping that maybe we might get thrown a bone eventually and it's really making me sad because i i want to play blaze blue blaze blue is where i started my tournament career i don't want i shouldn't say career because it's not like i've really done anything with it <laughs> but blaze blue is what got me into tournaments blaze blue has gotten me a lot of friends in the world uh that i can just you know even on here, Blaze Blues is what started getting me subscribers on YouTube. Like, I have some videos that came up before that. I'm not sure what my earliest... I think my earliest videos that I have available are Monster Hunter-based. Uh, which I, was just me being god-awful. Because that was the first Monster Hunter I ever played. Um, but in general, like, Blaze Blues is what got me started. Blaze Blue is where a lot of you guys came from. A lot of you guys came for. A lot of people that have disappeared forever... <laughs> That were very involved back in the CS days, and now I have not seen uh, them in quite some time. But there are definitely a lot of names that, you know, they just dropped a comment. I would be like, holy shit, what's up, dude? I haven't seen your name in ages. Glad to see you again. You know, like, I've made friends with people that I have not even met because you interact with me on my YouTube stuff. And a lot of that has to do with Blaze Blue. So Blaze Blue's always going to have that special little spot in my heart. And I need it to stop breaking it. It's the abusive relationship rearing its ugly head over and over and over, and I want it to stop. Why can't you just love me, man? Damn! 
That's why you not an evil. That's right. It's all on me. I called up Mr. Wizard personally. And I was like, hey, yo, dude. You don't know me. You never talked to me. But if you pause that video you showed of the Mad Cat's Cup of Mike Ross against F Champ, I think it was against F Champ, you can see me in the background right there. I'm the big motherfucker with the beard. That's right. Did you notice that? I was in the Evo game announcement stream for about 0.2 seconds. I'm famous. I will give you all of my money to put Pockin into Evo instead of Blaze Blue. That was all on me. All on me. I claim responsibility for Blaze Blue not being at Evo this year. Because it done fucked me over too many times. This story is completely false and fabricated. Do not listen to a single word of what he says. You, he cannot be trusted. Anyway, I would do it. Because Blaze Blue is mean to me. And I gotta get my payback somehow. Shoot. But, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. <sighs> Central Fiction needs to get here soon. Because I am getting Nitro Plus Blasters. Uh, I worked my game for our magic. And I will be getting it within the next couple of days. Don't expect any footage of it. Uh, probably for about a week. Because for those of you who may not know, mostly foreign peoples that are tuning in, you may not know that the Super Bowl is this Sunday, which is the NFL Championship game. And uh, that is like top three busiest times of the year for me. It is all. It also is the uh, is directly responsible for the worst experience I have ever had at my current job, which I will never forget and I will never forgive. I'm not going to get into that though, but I will say that moment, top two. It's the second angriest I have ever been in my life at one individual person. It was that bad. <laughs> so Super Bowl does not hold a particularly fond spot in my heart, especially while I still have this job and I know like I'm gonna be I mean I'm planning basically on like at least a 12 hour day on Saturday, probably more, who knows. But it is definitely one of the busiest times of the year for me. And so like schoolwork, you know, I, classes started up again, so I'm trying to ensure that for the beginning of this week I am completely and utterly caught up on everything and I'm also a little bit ahead of everything as well so I'm very well prepared for next week on top of that so I can hit the ground running after I get home and die from work but this Friday and Saturday I expect to basically spend the entire day working and then Sunday I'm gonna spend the majority of the day working and then I'm gonna have to go and put in some FaceTime with like family and friends and shit so that I can pretend like I have some segment some bit of life left in me <laughs> that I there's something inside of me that still somewhat likes people even though that died long ago I'm that's that's a lie I love each and every one of you everybody else though can go fuck themselves but you guys are awesome <laughs> but yeah so um I will be getting that and I'm sure I'll find a little bit of time to kind of sit down and fiddle with the game a little bit but I like I said I don't know a, I literally don't do not know anything about that game. I don't know anything about potential systems, uh, system mechanics. I don't know anything about, you know, potential combo mechanics. I don't know how many buttons they use. I don't even know the name of a single character in that game. So I am going in completely dry with no knowledge whatsoever. Who knows where that's going to lead me, but so like I said, you know, I, I will be getting it, but it's just, it won't be anytime soon. Uh, well, not, I shouldn't say it won't be anytime soon. I might surprise you who really knows but uh <laughs> probably not it'll probably be at least a week before you start seeing stuff from that and like i mentioned i do have a couple more uh street fighter videos that i don't really know what i'm going to do with uh so who knows you know you may get something about that you know around that time i don't fucking know but yeah it, i'm gonna be busy for the next week pray for me <laughs> pray that i survive the onslaught of angry football fans there's not really anybody, because the thing is, is like, I mean, there are a lot of people where you have just some crazy sports fans. They are just, oh boy, they, they, can go, they can get a little nuts. But for football around me, like, I have the San Francisco 49ers and the Oakland Raiders. Those are my two local teams. Uh, 
The Raiders have not been relevant in a... They almost did it this season. They were actually looking good for part of this season. They looked like they had a playoff shot, but then they didn't end up going nowhere. Um, so that was like a pleasant surprise to them, but I, I've never been a fan of those teams myself. And the amount of people who will be like, oh man, I can't wait to see the Niners game, or I can't wait to see the Raiders game, are starting to uh, dwindle away because they have not been doing very much winning lately. <laughs> so there hasn't been a lot of, you know rabid fans running around like you know doing doing the rabid sports fan thing so i don't really have much to worry about myself but anyway i'm gonna stop talking now. i've talked for long enough thank you for listening and hopefully i will have something for y'all soon peace out